welcome back. Today we are going to be learning the easiest solution to the 5x5 Rubik's Cube. Before you learn the 5x5, you're going to already need to know the solution to the 3x3. If you don't know the solution to the 3x3 Rubik's Cube, please view my channel. I have easy methods as well as advanced methods for the 3x3. But just know, if you don't know the 3x3 solution, you need to learn that first. So the method that you're going to be learning is called the reduction method. This means that we're going to reduce the 5x5 five five into a 3x3. Three three. So you see here, this is one of the later steps. I have all the centers paired up, as well as all of the edges with their same colors. Now at this point, I could just treat this like a 3x3, three three, these like edges, and these like centers, and then just solve it normally. The 5x5 five five also uses slightly different algorithm notation. So if you remember from the 3x3, three three, if you saw an R, that would mean right side clockwise, U would be top side clockwise. But now, if you see R wide, or R then lowercase w, you would turn two layers at once. Or if you saw U wide, you would turn two layers at once this way. You'll probably never see an algorithm that uses just an inside layer, mostly because it's harder to do on a 5x5 five five Rubik's Cube than just to go like that. The first step of the reduction method is to get one center. I usually start with the white just because it's the easiest to identify around the cube, so I suggest you do this as well. Now, some people go bar by bar, so they would make a bar here, then they'd insert three white pieces, then they'd insert three white pieces, but I think there's a better way to do it, so I would suggest doing it my way. So the first thing you will do is make a one by two rectangle, so really that just means putting one piece in and putting it next to the centerpiece. Then you'll make a two by two square or rectangle. So you just put two more pieces in. Then you will make a three by two rectangle. So I'll get two more pieces. And now you can put in the final three pieces. This part is really just logic. There aren't any algorithms. And as you solve this cube more, it will become easier to get this first center. So now remember, one by two, two by two, three by two, and then insert the last bar. So just one, two, three, insert the last bar. So now you've gotten your first center. Our next step is to get the opposite color. In this case, it's, it'll be yellow, and then we'll get that center. But if you notice, as we try to put pieces in, we mess up our bottom. That means we'll have to do uh, something special so that we can keep our bottom intact. So you will never move white pieces up to the top, okay? You will only ever move them up and then down. So to do this, find the piece you want to put up, put it here, and then you can move it into place. Now what you're going to do is by moving the top layer, clear a path so that you can bring this back down. So you see, we had this piece up here, we brought it up, then we cleared a path, then we brought it back down. So now we've gotten one of our pieces in. So then you can sort of just use these layers however you want. You don't have to worry about messing this up because you can move these layers freely. So now we'll make our two by two. Bring this up, clear a path, bring it down. Right now, oh, here's a lot of pieces. Now we'll make our three by two. So bring it up. Use the top face, bring it down, and now we just have to make our bar. Oh, the piece is already up here. So, if you notice here, when you try to put the bar in, there's no more space left for a clear path to bring it back down. This means you're going to have to push a bar out of the way on purpose. So, you see, we brought this into the bar, U2. And then when we bring it back down, that bar comes back into place. So in review, we pushed it out of the way and then brought it back down. Now you've made your first two centers. Now you're done with the first two steps of the reduction method. Our next step will be to get the remaining four centers. So you might be thinking, why did I choose to do the opposite ones first? Technically, you didn't need to do that. You can really just go center by center. But I think this is the best way because now you have two on the side that you already know what colors will be there. Now the only cube turns you'll have to do is up and down. So just 
pick a side that looks like it already has some colors. I see an orange bar here and an orange bar here, so this seems easy. And I can move these outer layers freely, and that won't mess this up. So, I already had the 1x2 in there, and now I have 2x2. Two two. Now let's put some more pieces in. And then you'll have to know that when you're putting these last pieces in, not to mess up what you've already built. But once again, this part is really just logic. There aren't any algorithms. All right, so now we have these opposite ones and we built one. Now I would not suggest doing the opposite one next because then you'll have to keep looking up and down for the last two centers. So either pick up or down. I see some pieces in here, so I'll pick here. All right, now when we put these pieces in, we have to be mindful that we have an orange center here. So I'll put these in, clear a path, bring this down. Remember, we have to clear the path because we recently pushed this out of the way, so we'll have to bring it back. Here's another bar. The 5x5 is actually pretty easy because there aren't too many center pieces. Once you get to bigger cubes, it's rare that you'll find pieces together like this. But for the 5x5, five five, generally, you'll see two pieces together. All right, so we'll bring this up, clear a path, bring it down. And now, now, even when I'm forming my bar, I'll have to know that when I'm making it, I'll have to bring pieces back down and things like that. Or I could just here, clear a path, do the opposite. Here, clear a path, do the opposite. Here, clear a path, do the opposite. And now I'll push my bar out of the way, bring it back. Now we've gotten those. Now, really all you have to do is five centers because once you've made the fifth center, the sixth one will of course be in place. So just pick one color, I'll just pick blue. And so I already have a two by two square. Bring this in, clear a path, bring it out. And now we have is sort of tough thing. So we only have two centers left and we have a few pieces left. So people have made algorithms to do any of these cases once you've made a three by two. But I think that if you're good with logic, you should be able to figure these out on your own. It took me a few hours the first time I solved the five by five. So I wouldn't be surprised if it took you a little while to get these last two centers. So just kind of reason it out, try to build blocks like that. But then, of course, if you have this bar case, push the bar out of the way, bring it back in, and now you've made your last two centers. Now that you've made all six centers on the Rubik's Cube, it's time to go to edge pairing. Remember, our current goal is to have this look like a three by three. So now that we have the centers in, all that's left is to pair up the edges. So look around the cube for two identical colored edges. I see this orange one and this orange and white one. So we can move these outer layers freely. So what we're going to want to do is to have these in two different lines. So you see right now they're in the same line. So I'll just sort of turn these outer faces. You'll get better at knowing where pieces are as you turn outer faces. So now I have this in the top row and this in the bottom row. This is good. So now what we want to do is put these next to each other. Now, when we do this, we just mess up our centers. So what we're going to have to do is put these together and then switch them out with something else. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do an R move. Then I'm going to look on my top face. Since this is the first edge, it'll be easy to find ones that are broken. When I say broken, I mean that no two pieces on here are the same colors or are already paired up. So I find this broken edge, put it in, and now I can fix my centers. So all we really did was move here, switched it out, moved back. You can go edge by edge or just go as you see them. Maybe for beginners, edge by edge might be better. So now I see my last orange and white piece, and I have my two pieces here. So I'm gonna put this in, switch it out with a broken edge, and move this back. You can move either the top, the middle, or the bottom. 
or even two at once to move pieces together. So now you see, we've gotten all three of these together. Now you will continue repeating this until all of the edges are paired up with their identical colors. Now you'll probably run into some problems, so I'm going to show those problems right now. As there becomes fewer and fewer edges left, it might be harder to find broken edges. So with using the methods that I've already taught you, you should be able to get it down to only two edges left. So you see here, we only have two pieces to swap. So even when I put these together, I have no more edges left that I can swap this out with. This means that we're going to have to do a special algorithm to switch only these two pieces and keep the rest intact. So this algorithm really isn't that long, so I definitely suggest learning it. So this is what you will do. You'll have these edges here on the left, and then you'll perform this algorithm. If it was like this, you could mirror it, but since you're learning this for the first time, I would suggest just keeping these on the left, then you'll do this algorithm. R wide, U2, R wide, U2, F2, R wide, F2, L wide prime, U2, L wide, U2, R wide 2. So now I've switched those two pieces and now I can go on to the 3x3 three three stage. So in review, I did the same two moves and I did F2, R wide, F2, then up U2, down U2, and then these two. So there you go, that's that case. There is one more algorithm I'm gonna show you. Here is a case when you only have one edge left. So all the rest of the edges are paired and now it seems like this needs to be flipped. Now really what this algorithm is going to do is it's going to flip these other two. So then we'll just have a solid green and red edge. So with holding it right here, you'll do this algorithm. R wide two, B two, U two, L wide, U two, R wide prime, U two, R wide, U two, F two, R wide, F two, L wide prime, B two, R wide two. So now here's our green and red edge. Now we've paired it up. Now I know that was a pretty long algorithm, but if you just watch this a few times, maybe take a photo so that you can keep practicing it, you will memorize this algorithm. Now you may have something that doesn't look like either of the two cases that I've shown you, but by using those algorithms, you should be able to solve any case. Now there are really 10 cases if you add all of them up, but by using those two algorithms I showed you, you should be able to do it. So here, I might want to switch these two pieces so that I can build my blue and red. So now I switch those, and now I'm left with this case, which we also know. So you see, by combining algorithms, we're able to solve any case when we have those last two edges. Now that we have all the edges paired up, we can move on to the 3x3 three three stage. So all this means is act like this is one edge piece and that this is one center piece. It doesn't matter what method you use, as long as you know how to solve a 3x3, three three, you should be able to do this stage pretty easily. Then you're done. If you want to see more tutorials or even faster ways to solve the 5x5, check out my channel. I have tons of videos. I hope this video is helpful to you, and for the future, good luck.